Okay, I promise this isn't clickbait. I've been finding some really dramatic ways that the iPhone XS has been able to outperform my 5D Mark IV kit, which costs about $5,000. And it's not just Canon, I was also testing this against my Sony a7 III and I got very similar results. Basically, the iPhone is able to extract more dynamic range in a lot of situations than these bigger, full frame, much more expensive cameras. And after testing the iPhone XR, its camera is exactly the same, so it's also gonna perform as well, even for a lot less money. Uh, I also tested the Pixel 3 and it's similar. It's not the same, but um, you're gonna get some of the same results. I will get into the subtleties here, but let's start off with the reason that you click this video. How does an iPhone look better than a full frame, much more expensive camera? We'll start with a quick definition for anybody that doesn't know what dynamic range is. That is the difference between the brightest and darkest parts of your image. And it's one of the most important aspects of image quality because you can see it even in a thumbnail. It's way more important than sharpness or even low noise. I mean, to me, it is usually the most important variable about what makes a camera look great to the most number of people. Anybody can see the difference. You don't need to have a trained eye to spot dynamic range. I'm sure you've seen the marketing for all these phones. They're doing HDR, high dynamic range, and Apple added smart HDR, which, I mean, they were already doing HDR in the iPhone 7 and 8, but now it's doing more of it. This is what's coming straight out of camera on the iPhone and on the Canon 5D. This is using Adobe's camera raw to process the colors and it's on their standard profile. It's a pretty similar look to what would come straight out of camera if you were shooting JPEG. So right away you can see this is a crazy difference. This would be a great clickbait thumbnail, but it's not telling the whole truth. To get all of the detail out of that raw image, we're gonna drag the highlight slider all the way down in Lightroom and preserve as much of that highlight detail as possible. And once we do that, we see that there is still more detail being held on in the iPhone than in the Canon. And most interesting to me was the color of the highlights. There's a lot more color information being stored in the phone photo than in the bigger camera. And by playing around in Lightroom, I can extract a little more color information, those highlights in RAW, but it takes a lot more work. And I should say, you could shoot HDR photos like this using the bigger camera, but you're gonna have issues with ghosting. So if the subject is moving, then you're gonna have multiple exposures of them and it just doesn't really work for HDR. And it also means that you need to use a computer and heavy software and it takes a lot more time. Whereas this is what the phone is giving us right out of camera. I will say that I think that the 5D handles the transition of those clipped highlights a little better than the iPhone does. It's a smoother roll off and th that just is the better image sensor. But I also posted these photos to Twitter without saying what either camera was and it was basically split down the middle. About half the people liked each photo more than the other. I also did this test using the iPhone XR because I know how YouTube algorithms work and I've got to always include the latest phone to show up in search results. It's got the exact same lens, same camera, same sensor. And it's also worth noting, having more dynamic range doesn't always look good. I mean, you can definitely get into bad HDR territory and I found occasionally the iPhone will start to push that. Sometimes it'll lift the blacks too much or pull the highlights back down a slightly unnatural amount. But for the most part, I do find it strikes a pretty good balance. And let's go over the prices again. If you're shooting on an iPhone, this was the XS, but you could do it on a XR, that would be $750 US. For my Canon kit, we're looking at about $4,000 for the 24 to 70 lens and the body plus batteries, memory cards. And then there's the software. You have to have computer and you know I used Adobe products, use Lightroom to recover this image. So we're looking at at least $5,000 for camera stuff plus computer software. But if you want more comparisons, follow me on Twitter. I'm always posting camera samples there. And before we move on, let's also take a look at the iPhone 7. Again, this was using HDR. It just wasn't able to hold onto the sky in the same way. To get the sky details, we can lower the exposure. So this is when I tap on the sky, expose through the sky but we lose a ton of detail in the shadows. I mean, really, I think Apple underhyped Smart HDR. Like they always say that it's better, but it was a lot better this year. Here's another example. You can see that uh, straight out of camera in the sky, there is no detail in the Canon, whereas we've got a lot of clouds in the iPhone. So I bring the raw file into Lightroom. I bring the highlights all the way down and there's still less detail. And no matter how much I lower that exposure, there are areas that are completely blown out of the sky that are completely preserved in the iPhone photo. This is really impressive to me. And it was when I was shooting these photos that I really started noticing it because you get the live preview on iPhone as well. So before you even take the photo, you can see this extra detail. And after you take the photo on the 5D, it doesn't, it doesn't look as good. <laughs> now let's be clear, this doesn't mean the phones are gonna be replacing professional cameras anytime soon. It just means that they're starting to get an edge because the computers inside the phones 
are moving more quickly than inside the bigger cameras. In my examples here, I'm shooting in RAW and I'm doing a lot of post-processing and I'm making those photos look as good as they can, but I'm, I'm thinking about that there's a lot of people that go out and buy a nice larger sensor camera, like, you know, maybe a Fuji X100 and you're just shooting in JPEG. And if you don't go those extra steps, you can end up in situations where the iPhone would have taken a better photo. And now let's go even further into some of these nuances. I'm sure some professional photographers out there were screaming at their screen that you can always get more data out of your sensor if you underexpose. Most digital cameras want to be underexposed and that's where they just save the most information. So here's another example that I shot. You can see that with the 5D exposed properly, there is not enough data left in the sky, even if I try to recover all the highlights. So now if we underexpose by two and a half stops, and that's a lot, I mean, the photo looks way too unusably dark right now. In raw processing, we can then raise those shadows, raise the total exposure, and it still preserves the detail in the highlights. Like it looks pretty good. Now we're getting close to what the iPhone looks like. And I also did this test with the Sony a7 III, uh, doing the exact same types of exposure. And you can see it's similar dynamic range to the Canon. I, I don't know how precise I was being here, but it has a similar effect. You can save a lot of the detail by underexposing a lot. But I've got to say, it really sucks to shoot your photos this dark. Like you don't really know what you're getting while you're shooting until you go back and edit them on a computer later. And you need a computer at all to do this kind of processing. And then you can also run into issues if you start to raise your ISO. So let's say it's a darker scene and you've set your ISO to 1600. Then if you underexpose by two stops, raise it by two stops, you have tons of noise and the photo stops being really usable. And I did some general tests with the Pixel 3 as well. It performed similar to the iPhone. There were a few examples where iPhones were able to save the sky in places that the Pixel wasn't. But the point is computational photography is moving faster than sensor performance. I'm gonna go into way more detail about all of this on the podcast. So go to stallmanpodcast.com to get more information. But I want to leave you guys with one important message and that's just remember that any digital photo is manipulated. There's no such thing as a pure digital photo. So whatever you take, in your camera, whether it's RAW or JPEG, can always be edited after the fact and probably was edited before it got to you. Now a lot of that editing just happens to be done by machine learning. And remember, no amount of camera tests on YouTube will make you a better photographer. So go out there and practice your lighting and your composition and all the stuff that really matters. I'll see you guys in the next video.